Welcome back to the Mechanics of Solids lecture series. In this series of videos, we're evaluating beam deflections using moment area methods. The next example, we're asked to determine the deflection at the free end of the simply supported beam with the overhang. So specifically, we want the deflection at the overhang. The loading on the beam is a distributed load between the supports A and B. What I always like to do with this type of problem is sketch the deflected shape first and figure out how to apply the moment area methods. I'll draw a straight line across the beam as my reference undeflected point, and then I will sketch the deflected shape over the entire length of the beam. I know that the distributed load is going to push the beam down between supports A and B, and because the loading is symmetric, I expect that the deflected shape will be symmetric between those two points. And then the, def the beam is just, the overhang doesn't have any load on it, so this part between B and C is just going to be a rigid extension of the rotation at point B. Remember that we are looking for the deflection at point C, so that is this distance right here, which I will call delta C. Okay? In order to apply the moment area theorem, I need to evaluate uh, the distance T uh, at some point with respect to another. And the way I'm, I always like to do it is draw a tangent or a tangent line from point A. So my tangent line to the deflected curve at point A is going to look like this, coming all the way out here, quite exaggerated, of course. And now I can label this distance here as T from C with respect to A. Okay, so that's one piece of information I can use to find the deflection. I also can call this, this angle here theta A, that's the rotation at A. Often I am not able to apply first moment area theorem, but in this case I can apply first moment area theorem because I know that uh, the maximum deflection between the supports is going to occur right here at the midpoint and theta m is equal to zero. So basically theta a will be um, equal in magnitude to the area between support a and the midpoint of the beam. So finally, um, to evaluate delta c, I need to subtract uh, t at c with respect to a, I need to subtract from that this distance right here, and this distance we can get from the rotation, uh, theta a times the length of the beam, which is 15 feet. Okay, so let's summarize that. We have theta a is equal to the area over ei from a to the midpoint. I'm not worrying about the signs too much because I can figure them out by inspection. Okay, and then delta c is equal to t at c with respect to a minus theta a times the 15 feet. Okay, so I need to evaluate t at c with respect to a as well as theta a. This is a familiar load case, so I can quickly sketch the bending moment diagram, which I will do here, bending moment diagram uh, in kilonewton meters. Okay, I know I, there's no moment over the unloaded end of the beam between the two supports the moment diagram is curved like this with a peak at the midpoint which is equal to WL squared over 8 which is 4 the length is the length between the supports 10 squared over 8 and this computes to 50 kilonewton meters that's our maximum moment okay theta a is equal to the area from a to the midpoint so it's equal to this area right here Okay, well, another rule that we talked about in class says that that area um, is equal to two-thirds times the area under this enclosed rectangle here, which is going to be the height of 50 kilonewton meters times the length here of 5 meters, and that computes to 166.67 units are kilonewton meters squared, and then we'll need to divide that by um, EI, and I'm just going to leave it like that. 
at present. Okay? Now, t from c with respect to a is equal to x bar times the area. Um, and it's the area between area of the diagram from A all the way to C, so it's the entire bending moment diagram. But of course, the only applicable area we have is the curved part from A to B. So we'll take that whole area, and then we'll define x bar as the distance from point C to the centroid of that area, which is right where its maximum occurs. So this distance right here is x bar, and that's equal to 10 meters, okay? So T from C to A is the whole area, which is twice the area we computed here, 2 times 166.67, uh, and that's going to be the area, and then times the X bar, which is 10 meters, that's the X distance, and that computes to 3333 kilonewton meters cubed. And then, of course, we'll need to divide that by EI. Putting everything together, delta C equals 3333 minus theta A, 166.67 times the 15. Um, and those units are going to be kilonewton meters cubed. Divide by EI, which is given as 8 times 10 to the 6th kilonewton meters squared. We have delta C equals um, 1 times 10 to the negative fourth meters or approximately 0 0.1 millimeters which is a small deflection but reasonable for a large beam. And that concludes this example.